In this video, I want to talk about a, a concept that's a much higher level concept and is more suitable for larger businesses that are dealing with uh, big amounts of data that they kind of need to wrangle um, and deal with on the front end. Let me just sort of dive into the problem and I'll show you what I mean. So imagine this, in my, at my work we have the concept of a crop collection. And these are just a couple of fields. We've got, for example, total tons, area sown, but there's a lot of them. We've got stuff like um, um, grain, uh, total grain, for example, or harvested grain. Um, there could be hay cut. And I actually normalize this a little bit more, but for the sake of this video, I'm just gonna keep it all within one object. So a crop collection basically describes a whole lot of things that have happened to that crop. Um, within the life cycle of um, that crop being in the ground. Now, here's the problem that I ran into though. Let's just imagine that we now have a page for the collection of that crop. We end up then having to, ha to model things like the crop collections component, all right? So there might be like an input component. Uh, there might be a formatter for the total tons. So you know, the crop collection has to know its total tons, but we might need to display that in a certain way on the collection page. But then we wanna have an icon as well, you know, for total tons. And that could be like a picture of an anvil or something like that. Uh, we probably wanna have a label as well. So let's say like total tons label. So for each of these different fields, total tons, um, total, oh, I don't know, what else did I have there? Hay cart area sewn, all that kind of stuff needs to know how it's displayed on the crop collection page. All right, but then the problem is if I then have another page, which is the summary page, then I'm kind of repeating myself because we'll have like the crop collection summary component, that'll be different, but I might then have another total tons formatter, which I already created over here for the crop collections page and then a total tons icon, which I've already got over here for the collection page. Um, same with the label. And a lot of you guys are probably seeing where this would go. So then what you would do is you'd model that data, kind of like what I've done here, where I say like, this is the total tons, um, I guess you'd call it a schema. And this is the label, the color, the icon. Uh, here's a formatter function, so you know how to format that. And that means we can then like, export this data as an Excel document on the front end. So that's usually what you would do. You would mod it like this um, using a JavaScript object. So then you'd have like, for example, export default and then that. Okay, so this works well. Now we've got all of these fields that can be utilized throughout our application and all these different components. And honestly, that wouldn't be component. That might be, for example, input component and then you might have like a display, I'm just going off the cuff here, display component. And then you might have like a graph component as well. Um, you know, if you just wanna graph that one particular field, you get the idea. However, we can do a little bit better than this. So what I wanted to do is I wanted to have a JSON object. I wanted to take as much of this as possible and turn it into a JSON object because if it's a JSON object rather than a JavaScript object, it can start being used in other platforms. So let's say for example, another part of your team is using Python or another part of your team is using Laravel or another part of your team is using, I don't know, Node. In fact, Node is a bad example because you probably could actually use some of these functions. Um, but the problem here is these languages can't really read a, a JavaScript file. They can read JSON, but they can't read like um, a file like this because the functions uh, within it, like graph component, display component, um, and the formatter, it's not going to know how to deal with those different components. Um, so it can't, it can't pass it correctly. Basically what I'm saying is this can't be read because it's got functions in it. So what I decided to do as I said before, is create a total tons.json file and basically remove these parts of the file, these functions and components, and create a version of the file that can be now consumed 
by all of these different languages. And in fact, um, with Laravel, I can now have a look at this file and create all of my relationships automatically by looking at this JSON file, which is really, really cool. So I can define my relationships once, I don't have to define them again in Laravel, and I don't have to define them again in my front-end JavaScript code. It can all just sit within this relationships um, object within my totaltons.json file. Okay, so that's, that's really cool. Uh, okay, but now I need a way to basically merge these two together. So in order to do that, now I just do something like this. Import total tons schema from, and this would be, for example, total tons.json. Okay, so basically what I'm doing now is importing this file into here, and now we can do this. We can remove all of that and say dot, 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 total tons schema. And this is great because it means that we can now consume this in all of our other applications, um, but then we can extend that so that it can have all of these functions that can then be consumed by our front end code. So I thought this was a really nice way, at least in my experience, to sort of manage these huge amounts of data uh, in such a way that they are consumable and consistent throughout these different platforms. Because having to add all of those fields again in all these different platforms gets a little bit dangerous. So having this centralized position um, means that we know that it's all in sync. This is kind of like the single source of truth. In fact, you could even use this to start doing database migrations. I haven't done that before, and I'm sure there's some edge cases you, run, you could run into, but wouldn't it be amazing if we could use this for our migrations um, so all of these platforms know exactly what the data looks like. However, um, and then our front end also knows exactly what this data looks like because we're importing the schema and they can then have all of these like um, formatters and stuff sitting on top of that. So hope you, hopefully you found this video useful. Um, I enjoyed making it for you. I love talking about these sort of higher level concepts for larger businesses. This is stuff I'm just discovering along the way. So some of you might know about it or some of you might have learned some awesome tactics that will help you in the future. So yeah, hope you enjoyed this video and I'll see you in the next one.